Hey, Bible readers, I'm Tara Lee Cobble, and I'm your host for the Bible Recap. When we left off in David's storyline, he was helping Solomon prepare to build the temple in Jerusalem. And today, he continues prepping Solomon to be his successor. First, he makes Solomon king. This only gets one sentence in today's reading, then we move on to the more important stuff, God's house. Maybe it seems like more attention should be paid to this transition of kingship. And don't worry, we'll cover that more over the next few days. But the reason the Chronicler doesn't give it more time here is probably because it's truly secondary to the temple. It's hard for us to grasp this today since we are now the dwelling place of God, But if we lived back then, it would be difficult to overestimate how important the temple will be. It's absolutely central to their relationship with God. So while a relationship between a king and his people will always be temporary, a relationship between God and his people is forever. Since this is such a big deal, David offers his expert advice and connections to help Solomon prepare for this massive upgrade that God's dwelling place is about to undergo, from tabernacle, which was a tent, to temple, which is a building. David is really thorough in all these details, which goes to show not only that David is a planner, but that the temple is a big deal. It reminds me of when God gave all the instructions for the tabernacle, except this is permanent. If you've ever lived somewhere temporarily, you probably didn't spend as much time decorating it or redoing the cabinets, but should probably take more time and give more attention to something when you expect it to be permanent. Also, if you've ever been part of a mobile church where you have to set everything up each week and then tear it down, You're probably very excited for the Levites that they don't have to do this for the tabernacle anymore. Even though they haven't had to move the tabernacle for a while, it's nice that they never have to show up again for a load in at 4 a.m. They can sleep in. Now all they have to worry about is showbread and offerings and incense and daily worship and sacrifice and feasts and, okay, it's still a lot. (laughs) So David sets up 24 divisions of priests to handle all these new things. And at first, he starts out with the minimum age requirement being 30 years old but he later drops that to 20 years old. Maybe he needs more people than they have available in that age bracket, or maybe he sees that they have some really mature 20-year-olds. Who knows? Then David organizes all the musicians. And just like the Levites have three divisions, the musicians have three divisions too. They're divided under Asath, Jeduthun, and Haman, all of whom wrote one or more of the Psalms. There are singers and psalmists and people who play stringed instruments and percussion instruments. I grew up in a church that wasn't keen on percussion, but my brothers really liked percussion, so they were always happy to see any mention in scripture that God wanted to be praised with the cymbals. One of the unique things about the temple musicians is that they're only required to play music. They have no other tasks. The songwriters are considered musical prophets. According to 25.3, they prophesy in thanksgiving and praise to the Lord. There are 288 musicians in all. They're separated into 24 divisions, just like the priests, and they cover a wide variety of ages. Some of them are teachers and some are students, possibly people who are just learning to play their instruments even. I wonder if there were ever any American Idol style tryouts where one of the priests in charge is like, um, with this guy, I think we need to see less show choir and more show bread. Give his harp to someone else. Where did you see your picture of God and his character today? What was your God shot? Mine was in 2325 where David says, the Lord, the God of Israel, has given rest to his people, and he dwells in Jerusalem forever. Think about all the weight and beauty and relief this sentence holds. Yahweh is the God of Israel, and he has taken them out of slavery, and given them rest instead, and they're his people, and he has come to live among them, and it's not in the wilderness where they have to move around all the time, it's in the promised land, and not only that, it's in Jerusalem, the most glorious spot in all the promised land, the place where God has put his name. This sentence is one giant hallelujah. The Lord, the God of Israel, has given rest to his people, and he dwells in Jerusalem forever. I'm so relieved and so happy for the Israelites right now. God is with them, and He's where the joy is. We don't want to just help you read the Bible. We want to help you study the Bible, and we want to help you engage with others who are also studying the Bible. So we've built out two tools that we hope will help you. The first tool is our daily study guide. This is designed for you to do at home by yourself. There are roughly five questions a day to help you dig into the text and learn more on your own while you're reading. 
These questions tend to focus more on research and study, and we've left a space for you to write your answers in the guide itself. The second tool is our weekly discussion guide. We designed this for a group leader to use in guiding others through a discussion about TBR once a week. It has about 10 questions per week, and they're totally different questions from the daily study guide, but they work together perfectly. The weekly discussion questions are more reflective and personal, so they'll help you build relationships as you work through scripture together. To get your copies of these or see sample pages from each, check out the store at thebiblerecap.com or click the link in the description box.